Well, good morning and welcome to Lake City's United Methodist Church and Merry Christmas. We had every intention for you to see a full morning worship service this morning, but unfortunately, as you can see, we had some technical difficulties. But with that being said, by the grace of God, we caught it before it happened, uh, before the service went out, and we're able to share something with you this morning anyhow. And so this morning, as we prepare for a quick morning of worship, I've invited Virgil to come up here and lead us in our call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let us celebrate the light of the world, for upon us has the light shined. My friends, will you uh, pray with me and for me this morning? Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be faithful and pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. You know, this morning I, I imagine that, um, in, well, it's my hope that many, like many people across the, the world are in their homes experiencing the, the joy of unwrapping beautifully wrapped gifts, uh, sitting around their families and watching as children are excited to see that what they hoped for became a reality. Parents, I hope, are pleased to see expressions of joy on the faces of their children. This is what I hope for. This is what I want to believe is happening across this world. But I do know, and I'm not so naive to believe, that that's the experience of everyone. I know that there are people who are out there today, this morning, lonely and hurting, suffering and going without. There are also children upset and maybe even angry that they did not get what they wanted this Christmas morning. Parents who are astonished to see their children act so selfishly. And, and here's the problem. These two conflicting thoughts I have this morning uh, of, of, of hoping and, and desiring to see people filled with joy and excitement and love, yet knowing there's people that are hurting and pain and marginalized. Leaving, leaves me to ask myself two questions. The first question is, you know, how did we get to the point where Christmas was about gift giving and being such a big part of it? And then the second part I ask myself is how can I celebrate this day and ignore the pain and hurt in this world? Well, the answer to the first question actually comes from knowing a little bit about our Christian history. So why, do we, why is gift-giving such an important part of Christmas Day? Well, it actually started around the uh, conversion of Emperor Constantine to being a Christian in uh, 1312 AD. It was the beginning of the end for pagan worship in Rome. And one of the most uh, popular pagan holidays, one of the ways they celebrated um, in, in that time, was to, uh, to, to celebrate Saturnalia, a pagan holiday that looks very much like what we celebrate here at Christmas with evergreens and gift giving. And so there's a theory, or at least the theory is, is that in or, in, rather than trying to uh, make people unhappy by you know, getting rid of a holiday... Emperor Constantine and, and, the, and the people decided, well, why, why can't we still celebrate Christ in the same way? Why can't we still celebrate Christmas in the same way? And so to commemorate the occasion of Christ's birth, the Emperor Constantine decided that this is what we would do. This is how we would celebrate. And the exchange of gifts was something they carried over from Saturnalia, but also were able to point as the wise men gave gifts to baby Jesus. And so they took a tradition of old and made it new, but also old at the same time. 
The old pagan custom of gift giving was rationalized into Christianity by attaching the strong association with the gifts of the Magi to Jesus, but was also likely influenced by the life of Nicholas of Myra. You might have recognized part of that name before. He was a 4th century saint who was famed for his fondness of gift giving. And of course, we renamed or we know uh, Nicholas of Myra by a different name, St. Nicholas, as many kids refer to as Santa Claus. So that's how gift giving became such an important part of our holiday about celebrating the birth of Christ. But then what about the second question that I have this morning? How do I continue with my joy of Christmas morning yet ignore the hurt and pain in this world? Well, the quick and short answer is I can't. As a Christian, as a pastor, as a father, as a husband, I can't ignore that. I know that right now my family is excited and happy. My boys are excited about what they got. My, maybe they're a little bit irritated that we, you know, didn't get exactly what they wanted. But, you know, hopefully they know that their parents love them and we did our best. But how do I think, how do I, how do I justify our joy when I know people are hurting. So to do this this morning, let's look at this morning's scripture. We're going to go to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, for the story of the first Christmas gifts. So it says this, it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and, it, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah. Because you, from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them that the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and look. The star had been seen in the east, went ahead of them, until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with the Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. So Magi from the east journey to seek out the one who was born the king of the Jews. And, the, and the, the irony of all this is that the one who is currently king of the Jews is the first person they show up to, King Herod. And King Herod is upset that there could be another more worthy king than him out there. So he asked the Magi, he says to them, says to help, them, to help him find the Messiah so that he too can worship him. Now we know that's not true. We know that King Herod's intention was never to worship the Christ child. And so the Magi went they, they, and they, they arrived to the Christ child. And here's the first thing they do. And this is what's interesting to me. So the way scripture says it is, is they, it, it's like as if the gift wasn't necessarily planned. But as they're traveling with their treasures, they open that they, they're, they're so astonished by this king, by this, this child that, just, that they just know is worthy of their worship, that they, they, they immediately just open up their gifts to him. They open up their treasures and give him gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. And then, after they leave, or after they leave the child, they decide, you know what, this King Herod isn't probably the, have the best interests interest of the child in mind, so let's go home in another route. And of course, you know, it's from this story that we gift this gift giving 
part. It's, it's, how, we, it's how we got here to gift giving. But then how do we justify celebrating when so many people hurt? And the answer to my second question is this. How can I celebrate and ignore the pain and hurt of this morning? I can't. But what I can do, what I believe this song, and this is one song, if you, you get a chance to, I encourage you to, to play it at your home, wherever you're at, is the Little Drummer Boy song. It makes a wonderful suggestion of what we can do. The Little Drummer Boy, originally known as the Carol of the Drum, is a popular Christmas song written by American composer Catherine Kennecott Davis in 1941. In the lyrics, the singer relates how a young, poor boy was summoned by the Magi to visit baby Jesus. And according to the song, the drummer boy agrees to, to come along, but does not know what to bring the child. Acknowledging his poverty, admitting he has no gift to bring that's really fit for a king, he recognizes, but I do have a drum. And so he asks Mary if, if he can play for the child, and Mary, of course, agrees and nods her approval. And then the drummer boy plays and plays his best for the child. And Jesus responds with a smile. My friends, that's the answer of what we can do this Christmas. Instead of just ignoring the pain and hurt in this world, we can ask God, what gifts do I have to present to others? How can I share with this world what I've been so blessed with? Instead of ignoring poverty, pain, and hurt in the world, do something, anything. Use whatever gifts God has blessed you with. Bring forward whatever God has blessed you with to bless this world. And so while many of us may be celebrating this morning, it is important for us to remember also those who are not. To bring whatever gifts God has blessed us with to bless others. So I want you to consider this morning, what gifts are you willing to lay before God? What are you willing to lay before the King? Will you pray with me? Almighty God, I thank you for this morning's message to, that, that encouraged me to give what I can so others can experience the joy I feel this morning. And if I'm someone that's not experiencing the joy, if I'm someone that is hurting, in pain, feeling lonely, Almighty God, send others to bless me. Show me your love this Christmas morning. I pray these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, I also want to remind you about your offering, your gift to the church. I mean, I, I don't really want to ever guilt you or make you feel like this is something you have to do. But I know this is something we should do. This is something that as Christians we're called to do. And in its way, we use our gifts to bless others. Our church does a lot of good work in the Lake Cities area. And I want us to keep doing that good work. And your gifts make that happen. Your gifts make that possible. And of course, there's several ways you can give. Of course, since you're worshiping at home, you can't show up here and leave something in the offering box. But you can, you can log online and give online like my family and I do. We give at lakecitiesumc.org slash online hyphen giving. Or you can send something to the church office. As another reminder, I wanted to let you know that end of year giving, if you planned an end of year gift uh, towards the church, you know, what tax purpose or whatever reason you might have for end of year gifts, end of year gifts are due by uh, December 30th, which is a Friday at noon. And I'm told just because we need to be able to get things dropped off to the bank to count them for your year gift giving. May God bless this offering. Let us pray. Almighty God, I thank you for the gifts you've blessed me with. The, the, the gifts under the tree, as well as the gifts that you've given me to, to, to bless this world. May I become a blessing this morning. May I learn to bless others. I pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
I thank you for joining us this morning. I thank you for spending this time worshiping with us, uh, celebrating with us. And, you know, I know we didn't have music for you, and I, I do apologize for that. But, you know, technical things happen. But you can still sing. You can still pull up a song, sing a Christmas carol with your family. You could still do something this morning, and I want to invite you to do that. But before you go off to do your singing, receive this benediction. May the God who brought Christ into this world to redeem us, to give us hope in a future, may that God also inspire us to be the gift for this world. Redeemed by Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Go in peace this morning. Amen. And Merry Christmas.